The Ark Barony of Blackmore is a living, breathing entity filled with many complex legends, stories, and rituals which help it continue to thrive, even if there is a solemn, desolate mood in the air here. It is home to some 110,000 people, and its capital, Dantradun, houses most of them. These are not a festive people, though they do have a strong sense of pride, duty, and honor. The gates of the capital are barely strong enough to hold a heavy cavalry charge, and its stone walls are lined with cracks and surface rot. The realm is a stark, frigid place, and even in the summertime there is a cold humidity in the air. The landscape is dotted with hot springs, bogs, and small, steaming volcanic geysers which cause much of the humidity and fog that permeate the land. History and Races Long ago, the original inhabitants here were the Flan Tuak tribe, who now mostly live in the bogs of volcanic geysers and hot springs of Blackmore after having been forced to flee south centuries ago by the Sulawese Sea Barbarian tribe, who call themselves the Zi. Then came the first Oridians of the Aryan Empire who settled and built castles and keeps here. The Flan tribe did not give in without a fight, as then Tuak Lord Rainier the Gaunt constructed the Crown of Blackmore, said to contain deep dark magic from northern Orth to fend off the invading Oridians. His plan was thwarted and thus the great kingdom adopted Blackmore as an arc barony. Ferund, as we now know to be modern day Furyundi, once laid claim to the land as a sovereign state and built Stornowain Road to act as a functioning highway for trade between the two nations. But the road fell into disrepair over the years since none of the local lords were willing to pay to maintain it. After the Greyhawk Wars ended nearly a year ago, many refugees made their way into the capital city of Dantradun. Exiled Shieldlanders, Tenas, and even a few Bakunish bandits have crossed into its borders and made their homes here. Why Ayus has not claimed nor invaded the Ark Barony remains a mystery to this day. Sages, Law Masters, and the Scholars of Solom. The Scholars of Solom are a small, closely knit organization of the realm's most learned men, whose sole purpose is to seek knowledge in the mysteries and sciences of Blackmore and share this knowledge with its people from the highest ranks of nobility to the lowliest of common folk. They began their work here immediately following the birth of the Ark Barony and are mostly based in Dantradun, though some affiliated with the scholars have branched out to smaller towns and keeps of Blackmore. The scholars are split into two different branches, the sages and the law masters. The sages are the collectors and gatherers of such information and are comprised of metallurgists, alchemists, philosophers, mathematicians, pyromancers, and the like. These men document their findings and discoveries and store their tombs and codexes at the Athenium at Solemn Castle, where they can be found practicing their studies. The Knights of Solemn were in fact created to be the protectors of the scholars, guarding their work so that none could interfere with the teachings and discoveries of Blackmore's finest savants. Eventually, the Ark Baron united both crown and doctrine and adopted the knights into his own ranks. The Law Masters are the pages, heralds, bards, and poets who tell the tales and sing the songs. They are the carriers of such information, and though not as studied as the sages, their role is to relay this information to the public as well as the crown. Those law masters who are highly adept at their craft are charged with providing information to the higher-born people of Blackmore. Conversely, those who are not as astute are tasked with spreading their tales amongst the common folk. Military Blackmore has no real standing army, but outside of local militias, Dantradun boasts 330 soldiers who range from medium to heavy infantry and three score Knights of Solemn who are classified as heavy cavalry. Cities, towns, castles, and keeps. Dantradun, the capital city of the Ark Barony, Dantradun boasts the largest concentration of citizens in the entire realm, 5,000 to be exact. Here can be found Solemn Castle, 
home of the Ark Baron and his Order of Knights, as well as many of the courtiers and advisors to the crown of Blackmoor. Within the city walls dwell a swath of commoners, laborers, masons, and the like. These citizens are barely able to keep the city intact and work to maintain it in return for food and housing. There are many poor folk here as well, and so food is scarce enough to feed the entire population. The city gates are in complete ruin, and many patrols are stationed outside to guard the perimeter. Sablewood. This fortified village is home to some 800 Black Moorish people. It is based in the outskirts of the Bernil Forest, and the people here are very much considered forest folk, which is indicative of the culture here. Many of the foodstuffs come from the hunter's game of Sablewood, which is a secondary source of provisions in the realm behind what is brought here from the Zi tribe. The seer of Sablewood, Sirax, keeps the traditions of the forest kin alive here, and the edicts of the Sablewood are strongly opposed by the scholars of Salem, who believe their culture is based off of myth and legend, and not factual data and scientific research. Dearth Kettle Keep One of Blackmore's deepest, darkest traditions and laws are the exile of its widows to Dearth Kettle Keep. This ruined stronghold houses nearly 200 widowed women who are sent there as a blessing from the Everwinter to cleanse their minds of anguish and their hearts of suffering and to bestow upon them a great wisdom. There are times when lords and nobles come to Dearth Kettle Keep to seek wise advice from the widows only to be horrified at what becomes of their physical being during this solace. Long ago, in the days of the Tuak tribe, women who lost their husbands were sacrificed to the black ice. Consumed by it were the sorrows of their loss, and their minds were wiped clean of all memory, replacing their experiences with a higher sense of understanding. It was believed that the ultimate form of suffering was that of a widow's solitude, and so the black ice cleansed them and removed this sense of anguish. This is yet another tradition that has been opposed by the scholars of Solemn, but the fear of what may come if Blackmore's people were to discontinue this custom is so great that there is no talk of ever changing it. There are stranger, older powers at work in the realm, and some things are better left undisturbed. Bitter Green March Camp the men of the march, as they are called, number around 300 and are tasked with patrolling the northern borderlands to keep watch as the first line of defense against the ever-looming Egg of Coot, as well as provide safe travel to the circle of the Fenrock Tor. This encampment is set in the harshest of conditions, and only the brave and tempered can be found here. The elder statesman here is Sir Redoros, a solemn knight who commands this order of weathered and seasoned men. Fenrock Tor Druidic Circle The circle is home to the Fenrock Tor, an order of nearly 30 Druidic folk who see to it that the dead of the realm are cleansed and prepared to transcend to the afterlife by returning them to the Black Ice, where it is believed that all people of Blackmoor are born of. The Fenrock Tor are the guardians of nature and the curators of the ancient customs of Blackmoor. How the Fenrock Tor are able to bypass the Egg of Kut and deliver their dead to the land of the Black Ice remains a mystery, though it is believed there is a powerful magic of which protects them from such dangers so as to carry out this ancient tradition. Though human, those of the Order are considered strange creatures, akin to that of the forest in dress and temperament, and not of human disposition. Mosshold the large unfortified port town of Mosshold is home to nearly 3,500 Tuacht offspring. This far northeastern edge of Blackmoor, past the fabled Wizard's Wood, is mostly cut off from the Iridium Blackmoor, and so they do not partake in the customs of their southern neighbors. They do, however, have a strong connection to the Zii of Tonsborg, who travel to and from the town in their longships, and trade between the two is vibrant. The locals here are expert fishermen, finding their catch in the icy shores of Blackmoor Bay. It was once a proud stronghold of the Iridian, but since the invasion of old Blackmoor, Mosshold Castle has become exactly that, 
a ruined, moss-covered edifice whose lifeless body emanates an algae, green-like color reflecting off the waters as it overlooks the bay. While the few surviving Oridians fled west, the remaining Tuaks made their way east and have been here ever since. Tonsborg. Midway through the second century, the Sului Zii settled in the northeasternmost part of the realm and built the fortified seaport village of Tonsborg. Their count here is 800, and over the years they have fostered trade between themselves and the Oridians of the south. And though they are technically a part of Blackmoor, their customs and traditions differ greatly. They remain loyal to the commerce between them and the Ark Baron, honoring a centuries-old agreement. Over time, their goods and supplies change from stolen riches to staple items harnessed from their land. Their leader, Tuka Mireki, is the Jarl of the Zii, also called the Sea King, and is the sea captain of their longships, which remain docked in Tonsborg. Town of Blackmoor, Castle Blackmoor, and Old Blackmoor. Once the capital of Blackmoor, this massive town is steeped in mystery. The tales say that more than two centuries ago, it was invaded by a dark magic from the Egg of Kut, an evil entity in the north which killed most of its citizens, and the few who managed to escape were lucky enough to do so with little more than half their sanity. Those survivors are long gone now, but their testimonies, though considered the ramblings of madness, lie deep in the pages of the Athenium. There are a vast many theories as to why and how this happened, and who, if anyone, resides there now, but no true evidence exists. None wish to venture there, and only travelers from far away seek its mystery and the answers of which they believe to be found in the ancient city of the gods, never to return. It is forbidden to even speak of it, and the stories told of those curious and foolish enough to wander there typically end where none survive the thick, cold, and dark air that surrounds it. Broom Sage Abbey This stone keep is a monastery of the chronomancers of Sindor, the Oridian god of time, infinity, and continuity. The keeps of Sindor have been scattered about O'Earth with no clear purpose to the outside world. The keep was claimed long ago by an exiled Feron monk of Sindor named Salanos, who believed this was one of the sites of Sindorian time chronology. The monks of Sindor are rarely ever sought and live a very clandestine lifestyle, and the abbey itself is barely considered a part of Blackmoor, if at all. Ramshorn Castle Four of the Ark Baron's sixty solemn knights, known here as the Solemn Brood, live here, and the eldest knight, Sir Argalak the Black, is the warden of this castle. Leftover goods and supplies, though scarce, are shipped there from Duntredon, and the ruined castle barely stands as a defense against the non-threat of the south. Argalak does what he can to maintain the castle, but it remains in unsatisfactory condition, and his men here, some 40-plus soldiers, are barely able to stay healthy. His loyalty to the crown is unwavering, and he does not complain. Instead, he does what he can to keep the castle afloat and its banners flying high above its walls, even during these harsh conditions. Glendower This village, populated at 600, is ruled by the underbaron Vargo Holt, a cold, calculated man who holds honor and higher regard over empathy. His family, House Holt, has ruled here for many years and have owned the copper mines of the Dragon Hills ever since. Glendower sits at the foot of the high hilltop of Castle Blackmoor and the Dragon Hills and is essential to keeping watch over the wicked and mysterious castle of legend. Most of the refugee shieldlanders have made their way here and been welcomed into the village and are eager to lend their swords and shields if needed. Many of them are experienced miners, and so this influx has helped Glendower thrive in many ways. Religion Blackmoor serves no gods, only the lords of Everwinter, who are said to be the ancient spirits of the cold and frost who watch over them from the land of black ice and have existed here for far longer than the new gods. In the eyes of the Black Moorish people, the lords of Everwinter are an energy to be respected and fear, 
not a deity to be worshipped and loved. Attraction. Though not often, adventurers travel here from all across the Flannis in search of the city of the gods, possibly located in Old Blackmoor, the ruined town which overlooks Blackmoor Bay. It is said to hold many tombs and artifacts of the gods of Orth, and may contain many secrets and texts long lost to time. These travelers arrive at Dantradun seeking permission from the Ark Baron to venture further into Blackmoor, and pay the tax levied against them for such travel, as well as whatever hospitality he can spare. Many young aspiring men are sent as guides along the gloom track to the old town, and many do not reach Dirth Kettle Keep. Even fewer make it past the Dulce River Bridge. Fear grips the people of Blackmoor, for over the centuries they have heard the tales and stories of the dangers of the sinking plain and the hills which lead to old Blackmoor. Foul magic is afoot here, and the Wizard's Wood, also called the Wizard's Forest, which contain no trees at all, is where great evil lies. None have ever returned from the town of Blackmoor, and many who travel the frozen wasteland do not survive its harsh conditions. Economy and Trade There is no coinage in Blackmoor, aside from what the Ark Baron collects from foreigners. Therefore, trade and barter are the only means of commerce here. The Zi provides salted fish from Mosshold, ivory from the tusks of great walrus found in Blackmoor Bay, sealskins, amber, meat, oil and blubber from their whaling expeditions. They provide these items of return for this coinage, and sometimes copper materials and rarely gems, which they then use when foraying further east. Copper is mined at Glendower, and gems are seldom found there as well. The Sablewood also provides goods from the forest, but not enough to sustain the entire realm. There is no real vegetation in Blackmoor, and so cod grass from the inland marshes are in abundance and serve a great purpose as feed for their livestock, and some of its properties can even be used to treat ailments. Sawgrass is also grown here, which is used to make many solvents and alcohol. Some of the living creatures here consist of ducks, geese, raccoons, turtles, and frogs, some of which can be eaten but are hard to find and are not as satiating as the fish and meat provided by the CI. Government Blackmoor Castle in Old Blackmoor was once ruled by an Ark Baron and its baronial council, but not since the capital was moved to Dantradun has this method been used. The Ark Baron claims absolute rule, though he does keep a small group of advisors in his court. Today, some of these courtiers include Jor, whose honeyed words often crack a smile on the Ark Baron's lips, Lotheus, a proud shieldlander whose loyalty to the Ark Baron can be found at the hilt on his hip, Rodeus, a jack-of-all tradesman who oversees many of the guilds of the realm, and Sir Koros, the grey-bearded elder guard who oversees the affairs and duties of the solemn knights.